I'm Kevin Cameron. I'm sitting here at a table in my shop and I'm about to do something a little different. Instead of talking about stress concentration leading to cracks and failure, I'm going to talk about how things work when things are just fine. In this case, exhaust pipes. Here is a 421 four-stroke exhaust system from a 600 Ninja and here is a two-stroke exhaust pipe. Quite a different shape. In the one hand we have cylindrical pipes leading from the cylinders down to a junction where they join two together and run out to the end where you can see a divider in the middle of the pipe. That's why we call this a four into two into one or just a four to one pipe. What we hope to accomplish with the correct exhaust pipe design is to convert some of the otherwise wasted exhaust energy coming out the exhaust port or exhaust valve into something useful for making power. Here's the two-stroke pipe. Years ago, the late Gordon Jennings, in his little book, Two-Stroke Tuner's Handbook, explained to us how it works. Still works the same way. When the piston begins to expose the exhaust port in a two-stroke cylinder, exhaust port cut through the cylinder wall, a pulse of high pressure gas, 80 to 100 psi, enters this pipe. It travels at the local speed of sound, which because the exhaust gas is very hot, is very high, like 2700 feet per second. When it encounters the widening part of the pipe, the exhaust gas can expand somewhat. And when it does, it sends a wave of expansion back to the cylinder. So the whole time that the exhaust pulse is traveling down this widening part of the pipe, which I like to call the horn, it is continually sending back a low pressure signal. What that does when it reaches the cylinder, it, is, it increases the pressure difference across the transfer ports and thereby helps to pump fresh charge into the cylinder from the crankcase. Then during the time that no action is required, it travels down the center section of constant diameter. Meanwhile, back at the engine, the piston has reached bottom center and it's starting back up on compression. First, it closes the transfer ports, but the exhaust port is still open. The rising piston may push fresh charge out the exhaust, thus wasting it. But this converging pipe, this reverse cone, which the Germans call a gegenconus, a contra cone, sends back a wave of positive pressure and that wave arrives in the cylinder just as the piston is about to close the exhaust port and it pushes any fresh charge that has been lost into the exhaust back into the cylinder. The piston closes the port and compression continues as the piston rises. So this two-stroke pipe is an air pump. It helps the pumping of the engine. Normally we think that the crankcase in a two-stroke is what pumps fresh charge into the cylinder, but it gets a lot of help from the pipe. In the four-stroke case, a pulse of pressure, again at maybe 100 psi, and of course we're talking full throttle here, travels at the local speed of sound down the header pipe until it reaches a junction where it joins one of the other two headers. That's a point of expansion. Wherever there is a point of expansion, a negative wave of pressure is reflected back up the pipe. If the engine is operating at the design RPM for this effect, that low pressure will arrive in the cylinder during what's called overlap. The piston is near top dead center. The intake valve is beginning to open the exhaust valve has not yet closed. 
That period when both intake and exhaust are slightly open is called overlap, for obvious reasons. This negative wave arrives just in time to draw out the exhaust gas that is sitting above the piston at top dead center. And that low pressure propagates across to the intake valve and starts the intake process early, before the piston has even started to move down. So in effect, what this pipe is doing is it is advancing the occurrence of some intake by sending back a negative wave that propagates through to the intake system. It starts the intake process, it draws out leftover exhaust gas, and in the RPM range in which this effect is designed to operate, it boosts torque. At some lower speed, instead of being a negative pressure wave that arrives back here, with its beneficial result of starting the intake process early, it is a positive pressure wave. It blows more exhaust gas back into the cylinder, back into the intake pipe, even into the air box. This produces the dreaded flat spot. All you can do is convert from one type of pipe, the early type was a four into one, into a four into two into one. This looks like a four into one, but this pipe has a divider down the middle of it. So this is actually the collector. What that does is it provides a second point of expansion so that it produces a negative wave that comes back and can cancel part of the positive wave that sometimes produces the flat spot. So the flat spot is filled in, maybe not completely, but it's not a place of no return, thereby increasing acceleration. When I realized that this was how four into two into ones worked, I walked around the garage area in Daytona looking for a four into one. I didn't find a single one. Every four stroke racing at Daytona that year was using a four into two into one because it improves acceleration by keeping torque high most of the time.